Welcome back to the Pit Stop Ranch. Since we've been driving Pale Horse on a um, pretty regular basis now, uh, one of the things that has been a um, very noticeable is uh, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Now, at least three, if not all four shocks are shot. So, not surprising. Probably the original uh, shock absorbers from um, when this thing was new, now 35 years ago. Um, so we're going to go ahead and swap the shocks out and while we're at it take a gander at the front brakes. Um, not too sure how the front end is put together, if it's a, it's, it, it's a McPherson strut arrangement. and. Uh, it might be interesting playing with the spring and everything else. I'm not sure how these fox bodies do it. We'll be figuring that out together. Okay, you saw me pop the trunk, and on top of the towers, we have this cover, and underneath the cover is this, and deep down inside is the top of the shock, it's right there. So, three, uh, uh, two, two fasteners and it's all out. So. I'm gonna do that now. That simple. And it looks definitely like the stock one. It's the original one. Still seems to, it kind of feels like it's still got some shock left into it. Okay. We got KYB. Because. I don't know. That's what we got. Um, they're a good, familiar name brand. So, we got our top hardware. Comes with it. Of course, it's gas charged. So, And here's the old one. Really, this whole shock doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. So, um, I think it's the front end that's real bouncy. And we'll, we'll get to those in a minute. That's a, uh, I think that's a little bit bigger of a project. But, we're starting at the back because, man, eh, I want to start in the back. Um, that stacks kind of as a bump stop, so, and then we've got a retaining nut and a lock nut, so.
Now a little anti-seize would be a good idea on this. Then again, uh, the amount of res nice tight resistance means it isn't going to want to come off. Which something we definitely want. And just do it just like that on the other side and uh, we're done with the back. Okay, <clears throat> driver's side rear one is sh definitely shot. There's nothing left to it. Um, there's no charge left in it and it's just, it is toast. So it definitely needed replacing. It's been replaced. I went, went ahead and put the packing back on it. Gonna stick it back in the boxes and probably just throw them out like that. Or dispose of them properly, get them recycled. And here are the fronts. It is a whole strut. So next step, gonna get the front end up and then bolt it, pull it out, toss the new ones in. Um, obviously considerably more work than the rears. That's okay, we saved the hardest for last. And of course we do have our destructions if we get lost. No particular order. We will need to figure out um, exactly how this uh, works with the spring. Come along for the adventure. Ugh. Here, so this is gonna be that bad. Because I think these two bolts here and then up here, and that comes out and the new one goes in. Now, it is still a McPherson strut construction, so I forget these two bolts out of the way. This is going to want to be a little bit floppy. So, and if this is the lowering, we're going to need to shift the jack around. Leslie. Take so so that there. So we can undo this stuff and then get this out and then drop the, the new one in. Here's the top of it. As you can see, we have, I believe we can do caster and camber with these. Fortunately, the only thing we're worried about is this right here. So, based on the fact that right there, I'm guessing we just got to undo this up here. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and do this first and then we'll do and then we'll go ahead and take off the, the lower bolts.
there was a bunch of clunking up here yeah bushings all chewed up one down fortunately can't get an impact in there i'm gonna have to get on it with a wrench so this is gonna be fun What you're saying. I think our uh, rack is a little worn out too, but <sighs> calipers in the way. So, we're going to have to pull the caliper. Now, I just cranked down the impact from kill to stun because otherwise you could really shoot these off and mess your day up. <laughs> Given that these should not be that tightly on, fortunately they were not. here and we're waiting for the parts we might as well take a gander at the condition of the brakes Ugh. stiff now the whole thing's moving around a lot oh there's a lot of material left in these pads they seem to be dragging a little bit or something Rotor's in good shape too. Bearing's okay. Take that out. Now we've set it to kill. Okay, <clears throat> when brute strength isn't quite enough, use a fire wrench. There we 
we go. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> so I have sort of reassembled this thing. Um, the way it came out of the car. And I'm pretty sure it was put together completely wrong. Boop, 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 boop. And that doesn't help us at all. Okay, so this bushing here doesn't go up here, and this bushing here clearly doesn't go there. This bushing here is solid and fits perfectly right in that socket there. I think this is the bump stop. This here barely fits there this rubber here is definitely what goes up against the bottom of the thing with this and this dust cap goes on and it holds up and it hits that shoulder right there this bushing here fits perfectly in there and this here fits perfectly like that. And this, well, because this That don't that don't fit down over that. That's that's that is a catch. That is an issue. And here's the pocket it all goes into. That's good and thick. Now I just ordered a new set. Might just cancel that order. So let's, let's go ahead and try and put this together the way I think it goes because that rubber all looks good. It was just installed wrong. That's what I'm thinking. that anyways doesn't matter Now again, all those DACAs were on stun, not kill, so. I think we need a new rack.
But that'll be another day's project. Now, over torquing these is a real thing. So what we're gonna do is we'll spin them on. That's over torqued. And allow the rinse and repeat the other side. Now, it is absolutely interesting that those bushings were all installed wrong, and as a result, um, this thing rattled up here. You'd hear clunk, 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 clunk from time to time. Now, we have a little, the rest of the Suspension parts feel pretty good. The lower ball joint, probably use a replacing too, but this rack is definitely, um, the, if there's some sort of the adjustment in there, but that's too much lash. That's way too much lash for this rack. So I'd say we're arguably in the market for a new rack if we can't figure out how to adjust it. But I think that's for another day. We got the other side to do and then uh, close up. Well, there you go. Um, since installing all that footage of me installing the shocks, I have um, run this up and down the freeway out to uh, out about 25 miles west of here and back again. And um, whereas I was mildly pleased with the handling characteristics characteristics of this car before i can now say i am downright uh, enthusiastic uh is it a cone killer um autocross champ of course not um everybody knows all the in idiosyncrasies of the fox body suspension which is to say there's a lot of potential there, but from the factory, it was tuned for pleasant drivability. And that's definitely what you get. Pleasant drivability it effectively puts the 285 horsepower, whatever whatever this, this stock 302 is, uh, does a very good job of putting it down to the ground. And for just being able to uh, bip along in fifth gear at uh, <laughs> miles per hour. All day long, pleasantly, uh, I foresee for my um, longer cruises when um, overdrive and uh, air conditioning is um, a uh, must, definitely going to be taking this. Um, going to make sure to drive it a couple times a week in my regular rotation of project or former project vehicles to make sure everything stays lubed up, battery just stays charged, and um, just enjoy it as a daily driver. There's a few things internally inside, not in here, but in there, that will make uh, the overall experience better, namely going through once again and throwing a bunch of crap out. Uh, when I did the archeology span video six, nine months ago, there was a bunch of stuff I was on the fence of keeping. Now that we've 
reached a certain point on this thing, a certain maturity on it, pretty sure almost everything that I set aside as I don't know can go into the bin. Um, and then in a good vacuuming and uh, good shampooing, and this thing will actually be, might even be good enough as a date car, if I actually ever did those. Anyways, Pale Horse here is now a runner driver, went from um, a rescue that wouldn't run, wouldn't drive, to now something that's in the rotation of dailies. Excellent example uh, or motivation for you guys, if um, you're out there, uh, you can rescue a uh, car from uh, neglect and abandonment. And, um, and granted, this one here is due to the nature of the environment with which it has existed, has uh, no rust to speak of. Um, you can find something that's been abandoned, uh, the proverbial uh, barn find. Bring it back to life and, and use, it, use them once again as they have been intended. A lot of times these things were parked for stupid little reasons. Um, quite honestly, frequently, uh, the reason was I want something new. So, go out there. Find these uh, uh, classic cars, spin some wrenches, have some yucks, get one of these classics back on the road and drive the wheels off of it. Because you know what? Nothing worse for a car other than uh, not driving it. Well, I take that back. Worse than that would be crushing it. And I suppose cutting it up for parts, but that's still better than crushing it. So the third worst thing you could do to a car is just park it and neglect it. And um, once you fix all the little things, the reason why it was parked, plus the what comes with being parked for 20 years, you can end up with a great car just like this. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And until next time, have a Project Car-tastic day.